This is The Baby Doctor, the show that makes homes because children must be happy and we are all about that. We are all about making your home happy. And how do we do that? We give you vital information for the well-being of your baby and your child. And we know that once baby is happy, it has a ripple effect, right? Everyone in the house is happy. Dr. Coy has joined me once again. Hello, Doc. Good to have you. Hello, Benny. Yes, and that was a, a good conversation uh, we had the last time on jaundice. This time round, we are looking at feeding the newborn. It's quite uh, an interesting area for, for many women. Um, we are always excited when baby is coming. Sometimes we don't think about how to handle baby after baby arrives. <laughs> all we want to see are the cute cheeks, the, the beautiful eyes that are, you know, all over the place trying to figure out what's happening around them. But it's important what the child is having. Um, we have come across stories of babies that are born and mom is not able to produce the milk as, as soon as possible and there's a bit of a delay and some people say oh give it time but how much time is recommended what should be the the baseline in terms of feeding a child once the child is born okay um, thank you i'm happy to be here once again uh, breastfeeding that's what we are talking about i presume from the question Yes. As soon as baby is born, baby should be put to the breast. It doesn't mean your breast has to be engorged first. But then it is recommended that as soon as baby is born, within the first hour, baby should be put to the breast. And interestingly, when baby is born and he's put on mommy's chest, the baby will look for the breast mm. and suckle. Yes. But I must say that is how, as, how soon they should be put to the breast. And parents, mummies don't need to worry about whether they are getting enough or not. We know that the first two days, there's not much milk coming out. But what comes out? That very deep colored thing, which sometimes you see like teardrops. Mm. Yes, we call it colostrum. It's so rich in nutrients that you don't need much to be full. So we know that mothers will produce less than 100 mils of that in a whole day, yes. But it's more than enough for the baby. And so the baby has about 24 to 48 hours just to feed on that and will be fine mm -hmm. till mommy's breast milk comes plenty. And if baby put, is put to the breast early, then it stimulates the production of milk. And so you don't have to worry about um, after third day, the worst time is post-surgery. Mm. I don't know why we think after surgery, um, mommy should be left alone and baby should be left somewhere till till mommy can walk. They, they say it's to give the woman enough time to recover. Baby can suckle. Suckling on a mother's breast, you don't have to sit up to breastfeed. So baby can come and lie on your chest. And even playing around the breast, licking it a bit will stimulate production. So, okay. And if baby is sleeping, mommy needs no panic mm. because they come out tired too. Yes. And so they will suckle for a few minutes and we sleep for long hours. That's okay. Mm. That's why Nothing I was asking what the wrong. recommended time is. Because then sometimes you see um, from the point of the health caregiver and even those around mommy, and I'm talking about the older generation, there's such a, a pressure on the woman to to breastfeed and sometimes it frustrates the women women i've had people who've had children recently tell me that um, I, the milk is not coming i'm frustrated and they're saying that the baby will fall sick and this and that will happen to the baby because he's just sucking for about five to ten minutes and and baby is done that is fine if baby attached well and sucks for 10 minutes and goes to sleep baby is not hungry if baby is hungry he'll wake up and cry okay okay the only group of babies we worry about are the very big babies more than four kilos, and then the very tiny ones who we know will not be able to hold on, the premature babies. But a regular child who is able to suckle well for 15 minutes and go to sleep, leave the child alone. That is one of the myths that we, people have. And so we get worked up looking for plenty breast milk. Mm -hmm. And because everybody is putting pressure on the poor mother, she gets stressed. And so is not able to produce. So it's a vicious cycle because stress will reduce production of breast milk. We should allow the mother to be happy that the baby has arrived, allow her to do what is, she can do best, let mommy and baby be. After they've rested for a while, 
mommy will have plenty of milk mm -hmm. and baby will suckle more. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we, we end up putting so much pressure on the mothers. And that's one of the reasons why many mothers are, are not able to do it well in the first um, day or two. Mm -hmm. And then also sometimes I think we have very anxious health workers who are very quick to, 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 to pour alternative milk in the, in, the baby's, in the baby's throat. But the baby can go for about 12 hours and it's fine with the little that you get, yes. Mm. For the newborn, it's fine. Beyond stress, which we will get into <coughs> much later, um, what are the other reasons why a woman may be unable to produce enough milk uh, to, to feed the baby in the first few days? Um, I, 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 I try to stay away from the word enough because who is determining enough here? Okay. Okay. The enough has been determined by mother and the, all the support team who have their own definition of enough. Mm. So far as mommy gets the little yellow coming out of her nipples and baby is suckling well, baby has enough. How the do you plenty know baby milk, doesn't have enough? When baby cries. When baby is fussy and is crying and mm -hmm. crying and crying. So normally by the third day, second day, third day, the breast is all engorged and is plenty. Yes, the colostrum is gone out. So the colostrum has been made by God to take care of the first 24 to 48 hours. Okay. When you are not going to get the bumper, you know, when you can produce like 500 mils from <laughs> one breast, no. <laughs> so... It's, it's about 85 mils, less than 100 mils, and it's enough. Mm. It's, it's packed with all the nutrients that you, the child needs. So if the child is suckling and is going to sleep peacefully, we will say the child is getting enough. Mm. Okay? And so that is it. The plenty that we, the, every other person is calling enough, normally comes after the second day. Okay. Yeah, so that's what we should know. Mm. Yes. A few mothers may not get any milk at all. They may be very stressed, they may be sick. That's a different, but they are not the majority. Okay. But I think now we are getting into the state where we are making the minority the majority. And that's why I didn't want to go along the enough line. Yes, but then there are few who genuinely realize that not even the yellow is coming out. Mm. So then in that case, genuinely, she's not lactating. And in that case, yes, you may give alternatives to okay. the child as support. But even in that instance, we prescribe, or I prescribe, that let the baby suckle and then I will top up. Because when the baby is hungry, he will be more active in, in suckling the breast. And the suckling of the breast is, is going to stimulate production of breast milk. If you don't suckle, there will be no milk. So mm. the baby should play around the breast. And then if genuinely nothing is coming, we will top up so that the, the mommy is also not stressed. Yes, mm. but that is not the norm. So now this new trend where every new expectant mother is going with a tin of milk is wrong. It's wrong. You set the stage already to ensure that you do mixed feeding. Mm. And the average mother, after paying so much for a formula tin, will we'll not let it. it go to waste, yes. And so now we have a new trend when even when they have started breastfeeding, lactating in the hospital, they will tell you when they come to the clinic that in the hospital they gave the child. So when I went home, I continued. I continued. So I give it at night because in the hospital they initiated that the child was not getting enough. And so at home I'm making sure the child is getting enough by and then. So we have introduced it. There's no need for her to have gone because out of 100 children, only maybe two mm. may need from. So why are we buying 100 tins of milk when only two out of that whole group may even need the formula? Mm. Yeah. You've spoken about stress, um, which affects the production of milk greatly. But are there other things that we may be doing or not doing to aid that process of milk production? Yes. For breastfeeding, for successful breastfeeding, there are two components. There's the maternal component okay. and then the baby factor. Right. The maternal component, rest is key and eating well. Is key and taking a lot of fluid. Please, I should put in a disclaimer here. I see eating well being defined as chewing all the corn and 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 and, and, and nuts yeah, that you can lay hands of. No, <laughs> really not, help in it's not necessary. Production. 
All you need is a lot of fluids mm. and eating a balanced diet. And I think thinking through this whole chewing corn business, I think the benefit is when you chew corn, you get very tasty. So you drink a lot of water. Okay. So, that's, the, that's the best scientific explanation that's you can give, I can give to the whole thing. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, they'll give you a bit and then you chew corn and you are drinking water. And so it's fluids. Rest, balanced diet, fluids. And then the baby factor, letting the baby latch on well to the breast. And I think that's where over 50% of our problems are. Mm. The latching on. The definition, the definition of correct latch on varies from, from person to person. And sometimes, because we don't know better, we think that the, whatever, when the baby holds the nipple, that is fine. Let me see. Many mothers think their baby's mouths are too small for them to hold their big breast. And so they just put as, as, as little as possible into the child's mouth. And so when you do that, the child doesn't get to where he, he sucks and gets plenty milk. Mm. So what happens is that he sucks and sucks and sucks. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you are still breastfeeding. He finishes and he's still crying after 30 minutes. And tired. And tired. And so that is the wrong position, latching mm. on. And that's one of the main reasons why many mothers are bottle feeding and are topping up, saying that the breast milk is not enough. Mm. It is because the breast milk stayed in the breast and the child was busy sucking the nipple. So there is the activity of something that has a semblance of, of, breastfeeding. of breastfeeding. So the baby is just sucking, but the milk is not... It's not coming as it should. Okay. Yes. And since we've touched on that topic, it's like my pet area. Mm. Let me say that, yes, the breast, we all know that the nipple is the pointed part. And next to the pointed part is a, a dark part, which is the same color as the nipple. Yes. And then the part that looks like our skin. The baby's lips are supposed to cover the broad part the behind the nipple. Yes. Black The surface. entire black. Many oh. mothers say, hey, the mouth is small. And, and my we answer fear is... fear that the baby may choke on No. My, and the nipple should be actually past the cheek. So it should go at that as angle. that far. Okay, go past the cheek. Yes, it should be in the... So the lips is for the areola. Ah. And the nipple is supposed to be out this far. Okay. This far. It's unfortunate we don't have pictures. So yeah. if you give the nipple and he holds onto the nipple, that's when it hurts. Mm. That's when it cracks. Okay. And every mother, I always say, now I tell my new mother, have your own experiment. Squeeze. Close to where you put the, my baby's lips and go back to where the dots are. Okay. You know, the big black has these dotted areas mm. at the junction between mm. the black and the skin. <laughs> Squeeze that place. Check from the two places where you get the most squirt of, the, the best squirt of milk. Okay. Where you get the biggest squirt is where the lips should be. Okay. So if you go around the nipple and you don't get much, you see you get teardrops. You go to the big dotted area and it splashes. So that is where his mouth should be. Worried about the size? If your child is crying, look in at the mouth. It is nowhere near the size of your areola. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so when that mouth, I like that. that's the size of the mouth. So if the mouth can take that, can look that big, sometimes yeah. it's bigger than your whole breast it's when you're screaming. screaming that loud. Thank yes. you. So use that as your assessment of the size of the mouth. Mm. Then you realize that your areola cannot let him choke. But doc, there, there are those who say that um, the different nipple types can affect the ability of the baby to even latch. And, and, and they, so they, they, they say that, oh, she couldn't breastfeed because she had this type of a nipple. Yes. Is that a myth or it actually is problematic sometimes? Um, it is problematic sometimes, but it is no excuse for not breastfeeding. Because I know we talk about a flat nipple and the inverted nipple. That, those are the popular ones. So there's a regular one which protrudes, the flat and the inverted. Ideally, yes, you can pull on them to bring them out. But it is not a nipple that produces breast milk. Okay. It is the breast. Okay. The nipple is just the external conduit. So the areola is there. That's where you suck to get milk. And then the milk will squirt out from the nipple. And most of the time, if the child holds onto the areola, the nipples pop out. Oh. Yes. So we look at the nipple, oh, flat. It's, but it's a bit difficult for the child to hold it, especially when it's engorged and it's all flat or inverted. But 
inverted and flat nipple space say do not mean a child cannot breastfeed. Mm. And most of the time, after a few attempts of holding on to the breast, or sometimes you can even pull it out, let the child latch onto the areola, and then it will stay out mm. through the feeding time. So it is the breast that makes milk, not the nipple. So whether nipple is hidden or is showing, there's milk in the breast. Okay. So we've learned the best way to have the child latch um, onto the breast and how far, um, you know, the, the tip of the, of the nipple, or let me call it the nipple in the this nipple, case, yes. should, should be, Doc says, as far as this, in, in the, in the <laughs> cheek, just beyond it. Uh, but Doc, the positions yes. of feeding, yes. what is the best way, one for the mother and for the child? And I'm saying this because you realize that many babies are unable to feed and they get fussy, not because they don't want to feed, but they may have colic issues and so they are uncomfortable. Uh, how do the breastfeeding positions aid in creating that problem? Okay, so I will address the colic issues. Half of the colic issues is poor latch on technique. Okay. When you put, if you give your baby the nipple, and you hear all the noise. He takes gas with the milk, and he doesn't get much. So he gets more bloated, okay. and he has more colics. As soon as he takes a bigger areola, and then it goes down, you realize that he takes more milk, less gas, and colics reduce. Okay. So that's one of the challenge. Two, if he latches on well, he stays on the breast for less time. The stomach is that big, it's small. It's like a little pouch. And so if you breastfeed him for more than 30 minutes on one breast, there's something wrong. If he latches on normally by 20, 25 minutes, he's full. Mm. And you realize that the breast feels very empty. Yes, yeah, so that is it for the, 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 the colleagues and all. The positioning, it varies from mother to mother. I know they have the football type where the child's <laughs> legs are at the back and he's in your palm. And then we have the cradle type where he's on your, your tummy. Some will lie down and let the child lie by them. Yes. Whichever that method the mother is comfortable with, it's fine. The key issue is for the baby to get the whole big black in the mouth. And what we should all avoid is when we all try to protect the baby's nose, and so they'll keep telling you, protect the nose. And in your you, bit to protect... Because the baby will suffocate. When you're, especially if you have very full breasts and you're pressing against baby's nose. Yeah. Ironically... By the time the baby comes out, he's smart enough not to suffocate. He doesn't need any mother's help. Mm. If babies are suckling and they are really suffocating, they will stop to breathe. I mean, for those who've had children who've had cold, common cold with no, nasal congestion, they will confirm. He keeps stopping to catch his breath because the nose is blocked. So normally, if you put the areola in the mouth, for example, let me use the cradle one, which I'm very familiar with and you put the head in the angle. As soon as all the black goes into the mouth, the angle corrects itself, the nose is clear. What happens is when we put the breast on the face, and it's only the nipple that has gone in, mm. then we end up pushing everything on the child's face. So if the child's head is up to the corner, and he takes the breast, God has made it like that. The angle oh. corrects itself. So you don't need to put your fingers there to try and push back your breast because when you try pushing up back the breast m look most of the time we are pushing back the black part which is where he sucks to get milk and so you compete with the child for the place where he gets milk so it becomes a hassle then he starts crying he's fussy he's he's unhappy and it's because he's not getting enough when he sucks so every mother's hand should stay away from the black if you want any part where your hand will hold let it match your skin color okay so it should be as far to your chest as possible. I always say that makes you feel like a, a, a mommy as a Ghanaian. So you should be holding something. So just hold the breast, but leave the black parts for the baby. Mm. Whatever position, so far the baby can hold onto the breast, that you are not having pain when you are breastfeeding, then you are good. Mm. When you are having pain, there's this myth that is normal. Uh, so It's a myth. When you you are must in, not feel pain. No, it should at be comfortable. Initially, first week or two, a little discomfort. But when there's crack, and it's so painful that you are snapping your fingers, then there's something wrong. Push a little more of the areola in the mouth. 
Also, if the child is not getting full, then, I mean, he's crying in between feet. If he feeds well, he should sleep for at least two hours before he needs food again. So if he's not able to do that, that means he's not getting enough and it's more often than not the um, is the position. Mm. And then also um, appropriate position, yes. I think, I think I've said basically yes. Mm. So the ta she should be facing you and make sure that all the big black is in the mouth. The nose is off automatically free when you put the big black in the mouth. And, and then you should make sure you, the child burps after feeding. Okay. And then the I must add part. the burping part. It's very stressful. Some of the kids easily burp with about five to ten taps at the back. Um, some of them, it can be uh, a lot of hard work. For, for. Is there a right way to do it? Yes, sometimes I, 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 joke, I jokingly say that the way we pamper the gas, if I was the gas, I won't come out. Oh. Yeah, we are all lovey, lovey, lovey around it. Just cup your hand. Okay. And, and pat at the middle like back. This. Yes. Okay. So that the body vibrates. The middle back. Yes. The okay. body Not vibrates. Not the upper part. No. Okay. Because the stomach is close to the middle back. Okay. There's gas down there. You want it to come out. If I hit your neck and I'm asking gas to come out from your stomach, I think I'm encouraging the gas to stay down. Okay. That's my funny way of saying it. Mm. So the middle back and then... <clears throat> It dislodges the gas out. Okay. Yes. If after a while he's not burping, let him lie on his side. If he burps, it so. will come out. Doc, so the, the burping part is problematic for a lot of women. Um, some of the children will burp with about with five or ten parts to the back. Is that the right way to do this? Yeah, ideally you want a bit of vibration so that the gas will dislodge. Okay. The gas is in the stomach. Mm. And so I say, cup hit um, across the back okay and the child's back is not that big your palm can virtually fit and so you just cup and and, and pat and so then you cup this way like yes it looks like it yes i cup this way okay so yes so like you a hollow in between. a hollow in between so when i hit the back mm. you feel the child is vibrating but he doesn't cry because yeah. there's no pain yeah it's not flat no it's not flat a pow pow mm. you know and then it comes out some children will burp with or without any effort and I always tell him, even if you try and he's not burping, just let him rest on his, sleep on his side. He will burp eventually. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's not a problem. Mm. For some children, when they are fussy on their breasts, it's because they want to burp. They will stop. So as soon as you burp them, put them back to the breast. Mm. And I must say, the best, another, you were asking about the right way of breastfeeding. Please don't do five minutes on one breast, five minutes on the other breast. The child should empty one breast before you move and why because the first part of the breast milk is about 80 percent water mm. and the last part is the <clears throat> the food and i have a joke i say you know the first part is like water and the last part is the banku and abenkwa so <laughs> if you drink only the regular morikoku you get hungry early mm. the one who eats banku and soup and drinks water doesn't get hungry early mm. so if you do five minutes five minutes you feel the tummy with predominantly water and so that child will also cry earlier because he gets hungry earlier just like if your friend eats banquet you eat cuckoo the cuckoo person gets hungry faster than there yes so that's also another important thing that mothers should know you empty one breast before you move on somebody say how do i know it's empty mm. squeeze the big black place where you squeeze and it's this, you did get plenty when it's empty you squeeze that place you realize that very little comes out. Mm. The big dotted part, right. part not the yeah. nipple. Yeah. Yes. And <clears throat> after a few weeks of breastfeeding, you know, yes, your breast feels lighter. But prior to that, just squeeze that place. If nothing is coming out, burp the child and switch. And then some of the babies, uh, Doc, and I like that you mentioned that the babies are smart. Because some of them will actually stop sucking when there's nothing coming out. Yes. In there's nothing nice about job no pay. <laughs> <laughs> so they will they will just stop sucking. That's an indication that there's nothing coming. It's done. You give it to him and he pushes it out. Mm. Yes. Who works without any pee? Yes. Yeah, so and, and, and Doc, we would we would go to the to the other forms of feeding besides breastfeeding, but because you've spoken about um <clears throat> emptying one breast, how do mothers who uh, prefer to express how do they ensure that 
baby is actually having the, the full complement of one breast before taking the other one. So they don't get things, get things mixed up uh, in terms of what they have expressed and how to feed baby with what they've expressed. Okay. I think now there's this new trend where mothers think expressing is it. Let me say something that when you don't allow your baby to suckle, you don't get enough breast milk mm. because you need a suck reflex to produce milk. As often as the baby suckles, he gets breast milk. In fact, that's why new mothers now are struggling when they come back from hospital because they've been taught to use formula. Mm. And so the baby then is drinking from the bottle and they're sucking less. So you produce less milk. Okay. And so ideally, my recommendation is this. Let the baby suckle. After 20 minutes, express. Find out what is left in the breast. If there's nothing, express the other one. And then you can top up the baby with a cup and spoon. I didn't say bottle teeth mm. because the mechanism of sucking the, bre the breast nipple and the bottle teeth are different. Okay. And the baby under two months is still settling down. If you introduce the bottle teeth, which when you turn, even without any effort, is dripping. Then as I told you about Jognopi, I mean, he's smart. If you can be assured of food, even if you don't work, or you can get money to spend if you don't work, none of us will bother to go to work. And so that child may go for the bottle teeth because that is less work. And mommy is also not even getting the nipple latching on right. And so he stops breastfeeding mm. and he wants the bottle. Mm. And then you are gone because give yourself four weeks, the breast will begin to produce less. Okay. So let the baby suckle, teach him to hold on to the bigger part. And then if after 20 minutes, let him bear, if he's tired, pop him up with a cup and teaspoon. If he's really still hungry, he will drink a little more. Okay. As he gets to know how to latch on well, you realize that the top up volume begins to reduce. So at first I was doing 30 mils top up. Then in about three, four days, it's only 20 mils, 10 mils. Mm. Less than 10 mils stop topping up because the baby is getting enough. Okay. And my top up here is breast milk. So I express, and let me add, if you're a new mother, you are not getting enough breast milk and you are worried, when baby suckles on one breast and it's full, empty the other breast and put the milk in the fridge. Okay. And drink water and rest. By the next feeding cycle, the two breasts will be full. That's why the two breasts will feed twice. Okay. So for one child, it's unusual not to get enough from the breast. Mm. So when you do that, the breast milk can stay in the fridge for 24 hours, nothing will happen. Can stay in the freezer for three months plus, nothing will happen. So do that, and then you will double your production. Mm. And as baby suckles well, there will be no need to express. Or for the working mothers, I tell them, express and toss into the freezer. Okay. Get a storage bag, date your breast milk. Okay. So you know which one went in first. Okay. And which one should. So by the time you're going to work at three months, four months plus, you have enough store. Because trust me, when you are leaving your baby for the first time, it's stressful. And you, you even begin to reduce production because it's a stresser. And the suckling as and well. And the suckling not is not going to happen as it used to. And you are anxious mm. and so when you have a backup plan then you are not a nervous wreck as you go to work mm. but then you express as you can because there's backup if what you have is finished mommy or nanny or whoever will just pick from the freezer and then and, and give to the baby so that is my okay. recommendation so the key here is to label and label properly so you should know when you expressed the order in which you express so that when you are giving to baby just like you do with your normal breast you would empty one before okay. giving baby the yes, other yes yes because when you use the breast pump it brings out everything and it, get, it gets mixed, All in the mixed bottle. up in the bottle so okay. it's, it's a one-stop shop okay so you don't mm. have to worry mm. yeah and the truth is if baby suckled on one and went to the other and didn't finish the other when you are going to feed the next time, start from the other. Mm. That's one of the rules. So that the more you empty the breast, the more okay. milk will be produced. Okay. And he did have, so the top up will come. So, yeah, let's do it that way. And the more we empty our breast, the more. And to, now the new trend of uh, keeping the breast, if you keep the breast milk in the breast, production reduces because um, God does not like waste. Mm. 
So the breast tells the brain that reduce production. Because you're not taking the enough. The consumer doesn't need that much. Ah, okay. So that's what happens when you are mixed feeding. So when you are doing the mixture, you don't produce that much more. Because the suckling frequency has reduced, you don't empty as much. And so why should the breast produce more than necessary? Mm. There's no need. Doc, let, let's look at the other options of a feeding when breast milk is unavailable. So there are people, I'll say, much people who live in the urban areas or people who are uh, exposed to more modern ways will quickly opt for um, a formula. But we hear of stories of people in very deprived communities that will have no option. Say if a mother passes away, for example, we'll say, um, let's get some light porridge for the child. What are the feeding options when, like in the case you cited, there's absolutely no milk production or when mother is not available? Okay. Interestingly, and when mother is not available and grandma is there, grandma can breastfeed. Mm? Yes. If you have had a baby before and a baby suckles your breast, you will lactate again. So in the past, Doc, no, no, no. Allow, I'm, I'm allow, us, allow, allow us to <laughs> allow us to allow us to process all of that. Actually, wow. yes. Yeah. So if you know, if you listen, the olden days, then they gave the child to grandma and grandma. Yes, because she has, she has, she has delivered before. The milk will come even yes. if she's in menopause. She, yeah, let the child suckle. If you like, go and try it. <laughs> <laughs> you can go for your sister's child and let her suckle your breast and see you like it because you had a child before. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's not all, all lost. Okay. It's not all lost. I know now because of infections and mm. things, we are careful. Yes. But if the child's mom and then if a sibling who has been tested and everything is fine, and they want to, they can. But if everything is good, for example, maybe the mommy was infected and everybody's not comfortable with what the child is bringing, mm. then you could use formula yes but formula is supposed to be the last resort and i like the fact that you said in the in the urban areas they can afford to go for it yes you can afford to buy the co container but the package of allergies and other things you may not bargain for hmm. and that's one of the cautions i give our new mothers right cost of the tin of milk is not a problem hmm. but the other issues that follow for children who may have allergies, when you give them the formula milk, you prime them up for a worse form of the allergies. Yes, research has proven. Mm. And I actually have a family that uh, gave me the practical example. The first child, very bad asthma. The second one, I told mommy to exclusively breastfeed. He has milder forms, so he, does, he just has allergic rhinitis. The mother got very exotic with the third child and decided to do formula again. Oh, yeah, she has a worse form of the asthma than the elder brother. Mm -hmm. And so I always laugh at her that she should have a whole, she, sh she can be a training. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the fact. The formula may be convenient now, but of course the risk of infections, the immune system that is, that is not optimized because the breast milk gives you maximum immunity, it 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 provide it produce it provide it enables the child to have better brain development. Yes, the child is well adjusted. All these benefits you can't put money to it. And so we should not be quick to think that because we can buy the milk, we can we can do all these things. Yes, you can afford it. Breastfeeding options. Yes, yes. So you can afford the milk, but be sure that you can also afford the additional package. Mm. Yes, and it also goes, uh, now people are also formula fe um, bottle feeding breast milk and the risk of infection goes there too. So we just need to put the, um, a little caveat here that this discussion is not on complementary feeding per se after baby has gone past the six month period. We will have uh, a much more detailed conversation on that because that's another topic uh, that needs to be dissected in different forms. So. Today we are talking about feeding the newborn, and that's why um, Doc is encouraging exclusive breastfeeding. You see, I'm trying to punch out the holes, but Doc is dodging <laughs> all of it and giving me reason why you don't have an excuse 
uh, to breastfeed. She says those who have an excuse are very, 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 very small in number. So yes. um, you, you, sh you, she's shown you how to do it. Um, if you're not getting enough breast milk, maybe you find yourself in the category of people who are not allowing baby to suck. Uh, suckle on the breast enough or maybe you're not resting enough or taking in a lot of fluids and hydrating enough so doc when it comes to sterilization keeping the bottles and other things that we need safe and, and the caveat here is that we are not talking about complementary breastfeeding i just need to chip that in we are discussing feeding the newborn and so doc is is very insistent on exclusive breastfeeding and we get it um, so <laughs> doc <laughs> how do we how do we keep um, whether we're using a cup or a spoon or for a top-up or we're using bottles, how do we keep those things sterile and safe for okay. baby? Yeah. To keep your, 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 your bottles sterile and safe, um, there are so many methods. I'm sure many of our mothers are Google doctors, so they go <laughs> online and, and, and they, they, they go read so many things. For our environment, I prescribe if you have a sterilizer, fine. But then one thing we should know is that when you finish sterilizing all your bottles and a contaminated hand goes in, everything in there gets contaminated. So it doesn't matter if I pick only one bottle, all the others will be contaminated. So you should as well let it run all the time. I like simpler methods, like not to prescribe one particular thing, but you know, we have this melting tablet and all these other forms of sterilization you put a tablet in water and the water stays sterile for 24 hours so that's one option a simple method i should let me put it in a chronological order so if a mother gets maybe express breast milk in a bottle and baby feet on the breast eh, on the bottle and he doesn't finish the breast hey i'm sorry <laughs> and he doesn't you finish see, I told i'm you so don't breast get biased. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't <laughs> empty the bottle because of our, our peculiar warm and humid environment, my rule number one is take the bottle teeth off. Okay. Don't cap the bottle teeth and wait for the next time the child is feeding and put the bottle teeth back in the mouth. When you do that, by then a lot of bacteria have multiplied in the teeth because it's warm. The environment mm. is warm. And so you wash it down the, the baby's mouth and gut and then infections. And so first thing, take the teeth off. Then you can put the rest of the milk on covered in the fridge. When he's ready, you warm it in hot water. Don't microwave breast milk. And then you can feed the child again with a new teeth. Okay. And this is leftover milk from the same bottle. Yes. How long can I keep that in the fridge for? Oh, till the next feeding time. Okay. Because the next feeding, that will be the first one that will go. Okay. Before you, you do the next. It doesn't go bad? Breast milk can stay for 24, can stay eight hours on the desk. But this can is, has been used. I'm asking this because uh, there are some people who fear that maybe the exchange of saliva going into... Oh, I think it's far-fetched. That's the child's own saliva. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, and no, more often than not, it's not that much. If it's formula, I'll say discard. Okay. But for breast milk, it's gold. And so I'm careful how quickly I tell people to throw away their gold, their gold or nuggets, you know, so... You can, put, you can take off the teeth. The key thing is that don't keep it on the desk and let it stay for two hours waiting for the next feeding time. Mm. Take off the teeth, cover it, and then put it in the fridge or even let it stand. Then the next feeding time, you can, you can that's maximum two or three hours. You are done with it. To keep your, your teeth and bottles, I recommend that have two buckets. I have a bucket for with my sterile solution and then I have a bucket for dirty bottles. <coughs> okay. And so when my baby feeds and finishes, I rinse it and toss it into the dirty bucket, dirty bottles bucket. So I've empty the bottle, the clean bottles, finish the clean bottles, and bring them all into the dirties. I keep doing that till all the clean bottles are finished. Then I wash all of them and let them go through the sterilization process. Okay. I could have maybe boiled as my sterilizing method. I could have used my sterilizing tablet as my, boy, uh, my sterilization method, or I could have been exotic to have the, the device. The device, yes. So whichever way I'm going to sterilize, 
I do not want to rinse, wash, and put the dirty one back into the pool because there is that inherent risk of sending a contaminated bottle into the the group of clean ones. Okay. So you don't finish want to one cycle before. Finish you start. one cycle before you restart them because when you are going to wash all of them, you take your time, you use your brush, you wash well. But if you are doing one one, there's that tendency of doing a fast job and then you toss it back. But it has not been sterilized. It has not been boiled. The sterilizer has been off. Mm. So no sterilization will take place yes. when it joins the pool. Mm. Good. And then we should always remember that whenever you are going to the sterile area, you should have washed your hands. Because if you don't wash your hands and you go in with a dirty hand, you contaminate everything in there. So that's how best to keep your, 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 your bottles and the teeth safe. Right, uh, something to, to digest. Let's just take a quick breather, process all that you've heard. We'll be back with more here on The Baby Doctor. Thank you so much for staying on The Baby Doctor with me, Bernice Abubeidulansa. Today, I'm here with Dr. Koi, and we are talking about feeding the newborn. We have established so many things. Dog has uh, busted so many myths and helped us with some important education on how to breastfeed the newborn. She's also proven to you why exclusive breastfeeding is the ideal thing. Doc, there are those who say that we are putting too much pressure on modern women. Some say that this whole issue of it helps the child, uh, brain, whatever, they say the first one, I did exclusive breastfeeding. The second one, I didn't do exclusive, but this one does better in school. <laughs> I mean, so they're trying various ways to suggest that it's all the same thing, isn't it? Um, the same thing, no. My question for the one who is saying that this one even does better, do you know his potential? But for the fact that you did not breastfeed him, he would, maybe he would have been super. Okay. So maybe you had a genius, but you've made him a standard boy now. Okay, so it's neither here nor there, just that we know the benefits in the breast milk. So if you can give your child the best chance, I mean, after all, that's why we pay for the best of schools for early years. We want them to have the best start. So why is it that when it comes to feeding, we don't want to give them the best start? They say it's a myth, though. Yeah. They say that look, so, someone even suggested that we're putting so much pressure on women, and some of them, even when they don't have enough breast milk, there's so much stress, there's so much frustration they end up not looking for other alternatives. And, 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 and someone has actually put on Facebook that that's the reason why her child developed jaundice. I don't know what you think of it. She said if she had known that because she wasn't producing enough, the baby would suffer. She would have just gone for um, formula, but for the insistence on exclusive breastfeeding. No, I agree. There are, there are genuine cases of women who just cannot make enough. And I think it would be unfair for me to sit here and preach that every mother on earth will get enough. It's just that I know that many mothers who could have also had more than enough quickly hide behind that and then... But there are others who are, I have had a few who genuinely, no matter what you do, they don't lactate enough. So for those women, yes, you can't starve a child. It's between starving the baby and giving him the second best. So if the best is not there, you give the second best. If you can't get the best school, it doesn't mean don't go to school. You get some. You go to the next grade. So that is it. So cow milk is the next grade. And let me say all formula are cow milk, except the one we say is soy-based. Mm, the plant-based ones. The plant-based ones. But then, so it doesn't matter the name we give it. If they say it's formula milk and they've not said it's plant-based, then it's cow. Okay. And so that is it. If you can't get your mother's breast and you can get the cow so that you can thrive, Yes, then we give, but just that we encourage, I always think that it's best to let a doctor who is helpful, mm. let me put in a, some doctors also don't, or health workers are not comfortable with breastfeeding, so they are not able to teach the mother to be empowered and Doc, get it in, right. In other places, we have lactating specialists. In my reading, I came across that, and I, I was surprised. I was like, oh, people are so advanced. Because uh, once a mother has a baby, they say that if you're struggling with anything breastfeeding, contact your lactation specialist. But we don't have that here. So who do we go to, our pediatrician or our uh, normal 
um, uh, medical doctor or a midwife? Who do we speak to when we have a lactation issues? In Ghana, the midwives are trained okay. to teach lactation. The pediatricians are trained. I was trained. And so I know what to do. And then we have a few who are very much, who have been further trained in lactation techniques and other issues. So yes. So I would say your first point of call should be your midwife or your pediatrician. Okay. And if whatever the person, if the person is not out, look, the litmus test is if whoever you are seeing will not stop whatever she's doing and let you demonstrate what you are doing for the person to see where the gaps are. And it's theory. Put all the mouth in the baby in the bed. I always say go and look for another person. Because <clears throat> teaching breastfeeding is an art. And that one I will say bluntly. It's, it's apprenticeship. If I teach you how to make a, your hair, I mean, if I'm teaching somebody how to braid hair, and I sit there and tell her, twist, 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 she will never be good at the job. But if she's doing it and I supervise and I correct her when she gets it wrong, she gets it right and it stays with her. So if that mother is taught to latch on and she can tell the difference when she puts that baby to the breast the right way, she's empowered to do it. She's happy doing it because it's not painful. She's not bending over her baby. So I always struggle with any health practitioner who will give theoretical knowledge on breastfeeding and not let the poor mother show her what she's doing mm. so that you can see where the gaps are. If the person is not comfortable doing, there should be somebody in their space they can call their lactation specialist. The lactation specialist is somebody who has been trained to help a mother put the baby to the breast mm. and help the mother address any other challenges they may have. Mm. And let me put it in here. When you go abroad, breast cow milk is given free of charge. When you want to breastfeed, you pay to be taught to breastfeed. Because there's something better in it. So let's not kid ourselves that, oh, yeah, everywhere they are giving. Yes, because they want. And now some countries are changing. Mm. Yes, a place we all like to refer to. Yes, yes. Even some states have now make, are changing. But in the past, it was cheap because you go to work early. Mm. So you dose the baby cow milk and come to work. They've seen that the products are not great. And so whenever you are being asked to pay extra for something, you must know that there's something good in that. Good in that. Mm. So I think we should not be quick to say abroad they are giving formula. So it's, a, it's not a gold standard. They've right. seen better mm. and they so, are changing. Mm. Doc, let's look at the, the effects of, of poor feeding um, beyond malnutrition, which <clears throat> is the, uh, the obvious one. What are the kind of things a baby will suffer when they are not getting the right nutrition uh, from from the breast milk from the breast and milk. is there anything such as quality breast milk yeah. <laughs> or 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 because you know, we've just established that some will produce more based on what they're doing the rest they are getting but is there a way of determining if this mother's milk is of more quality than that one what influences that if there's anything like that ironically god has made the breast milk tailor made for every child so trust me the mother of a premature baby breast milk is different from the mother of a term baby Oh, yeah. There's more calories in the premature because he needs a little more to grow. So it's interesting. And when it comes to baby feed, the breast, the, bo the body will draw whatever is in the mother to make sure the baby is fine. So you must be depleted of all nutrients for the baby to get nothing. Okay. Okay. If your iron stores are low, they will draw whatever is left and make sure the baby is fine. So maybe we'll take whatever it needs. Yes. And then the rest is yours to manage. <laughs> so, so there are only exceptions where mommy is very sick. Mm. Then you may say she can't produce milk or, or all that. And I mean, some may be so sick they, can't, they have to be on some medications for which we have to stop breastfeeding. Those are exceptions. And that one, please, we give formula. Okay. And for me, I don't prescribe one particular brand of formula. Okay. I said they are all cow milk. See what you can afford and give well. Than to go for the top of the range and then you cannot buy uh -huh. enough and then you are now diluting double. Mm. Then your child will not get Losing adequate. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. So, Doc, uh, back to the question on the effects beyond malnutrition. Well, immune system is also compromised. And then, of course, um, poor weight gain and poor development. Mm. And so that's what we know. 
And to answer the question about some of the signs that the child is not getting enough, the best judge is the weight of the child. And that's why it's good to go, to go for, for your, your monthly um, weighing. Mm. So if, the, if, if a mother says, I'm not getting enough, she comes to the hospital, the child is not gaining weight. Child is fussy. You express there's no milk coming. She's not lying. Mm. Formula. The truth is in front of you. Mm. This is a mother whose breast is almost empty. Child is not gaining weight. Well, let me put in, now modern mothers, one of our challenges is lack of rest. And it's not because sometimes we don't have any help, but it's because we, we will not let go of our phones. Mm. And so we use all the time that the baby is asleep to catch up with our friends. And the question is, yeah, boy, or girl? <laughs> it's not change, it won't change. So when baby sleeps, sleep. When he's awake, he or she is awake. You can then catch up on your house chores. You don't need to wash in the morning for it to dry. Even you wash at night, it can still dry. So there's no rule that if you wash before 11, if you don't wash up before 11, p 11 a.m., it doesn't. Yeah. So th those are a few things that for the modern mother, mm. we have to be aware of. Sleep is important. When aunties and grandmas come and we are still up during the day, just tidying up, catching up, just in catching up, chatting, then we don't rest. Mind you, you did a night shift alone. Hmm. All your friends were that asleep. <laughs> yes. And now we say that it should help. I agree. But they don't have breasts, which is producing milk. So let them do the help before the midnight shift. When they come from work, they should get useful, taking care of the child while mommy rests. And grandmas, too, if you let them stay up late, their, high, their blood pressure will go up. So let them also do the 8 to 11 shift. And then the night shift, mommy can manage it because she's had some before night shift rest. And then in the morning, you, you catch up on your sleep and let everybody else do their rest of the work. Really Thank important you. tips here for you, but we have more to share. Look at this. We'll be back to wrap up the show. And those were your tips for today. Dr. Koy is still with me. Doc, we are wrapping up. Quickly, we'll do a mop-up of all we've discussed earlier. But before that, uh, there are mothers who complain about children who are just lazy at eating. You say, whatever you do, this child will not. He's just so lazy. How do you deal with children who appear to have some form of bad eating habits? Okay. One... Yes, I mean, there are generally some children who do not want to stay on their breast forever. They will do 10, 15 minutes and they are done. And they sleep enough for two to three hours before they feed again. And they are gaining weight. For that child, he latches on well. He empties what he wants to take. And is growing well, so don't worry. Okay. It is his style of feeding. He doesn't like staying on the breast for 30 minutes. That's okay. So far as he's growing well, don't worry because baby is getting enough. If he's not getting enough and he's not staying on the breast, is it because he's distracted? Okay. You are in a very active environment, and so for that reason, the child is looking around, looking at who, what is happening, so he sucks a bit and gets distracted. Sometimes this other sibling is entertaining him or her, and so he's just <laughs> busy watching them. In that case, you feed him in a quiet place so that he can concentrate. But for me, the, 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 the test is, is the child gaining weight. Mm. Yes, and, and you see. And sometimes you say, look in the child's mouth. What exactly are we looking for there if the baby is struggling to feed? Oh, that one, if the, if the baby is struggling to feed, we are looking at two things. Sometimes we, call, we talk about cleft palate. There's a hole in the roof of the mouth. And so he keeps choking on it or something. And then in extreme cases, they talk about tongue tie. But I don't want to make a big deal of tongue because half of the tongues we say are tied and have no, have no problem. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Tongue tie is only important when the child cannot suckle okay. and cannot coordinate the milk to go back. So if the child is able to suckle, is able to cry and make all the appropriate noise, please leave the tongue alone. Mm. Okay. So those are the things we look for in the mouth. Yes. I can count the, by my whole career so if I can count the real cases of tongue tie that we had to do anything about. Mm -hmm. There are no more than two. Wow. Yeah. Half of them are not necessary. Okay. And, and the, the tongue tie, for those of you who may not know, it's um, what people used to describe and um, the, the tongue stuck.
to the yes. to the base of, of the, the of tongue, the jaw or of the, the of, of the mouth. Yeah. The floor of the mouth. Yeah. Yes. And there's no rule that everybody should be able to raise their tongue. Okay. We think no. So far as you can speak. If we sample all of us here, some of us will not be able to roll the tongue up. Yes, and my teacher was.